dollars, that's what the pussy cost me. And when the nigga started hating, that's when the nigga lost me. Fantastic all, that's what the hoes call me. Mazuma TV, and I'm back with some more boxing. All right, guys, I'm going to do my prediction now between Andre the Beast, Birdo, and Sean Showtime Porter. That fight is going on tomorrow night, 22nd of April. And um, I'm looking forward to this fight, man. I've made several videos explaining how this is a slept-on fight. Eh, shit, this may be a candidate for fight of the year. You know what I'm saying? Considering both of their styles and just um, knowing how these guys fight, it's gonna be it may be a fucking barn burner, man. You never know, you know? And um considering that Sean Porter always comes forward, has that relentless aggression, um, likes to fight on the inside, and Andre Berto is a power puncher that comes forward as well and ain't never been in a boring fight. Neither of these guys have been in boring fights, so stylistically looking at this matchup shit, you gonna see fireworks, you know what I'm saying? I know I sound like a promoter and shit, but that's genuinely what I believe when looking at this fight. And um, Andre Berto is a two-time world champion. And um, <clears throat> fucking Andre Berto is a two-time world champion. And Sean Porter is a former world champion before being defeated by Kell Brook. You know, he had the IBF strap. And um, both of these guys have been doing their thing. Andre Berto has been at 147 for the longest. He has a, a pretty stacked resume. Josecito Lopez, Victor Ortiz twice, Soto Carraz, Robert Guerrero, Mayweather, um, he, he does his thing, you know what I'm saying? And, um, so as Sean Porter, he's building up a little resume of his own, going from Kell Brook to Adrian Broner to Keith Thurman, and, uh, et cetera, you know what I'm saying? Pauli Malinaji, he definitely has some fighters on his list. And, um, you could debate that the guys that I have mentioned, a lot of the guys I have mentioned are responsible for the losses on Andre Berto's record, but nonetheless, he gave it his all. Man tore his rotator cuff. He got stopped. Um, he's been bruised up before. He's been knocked down, but only been stopped once. And I think that had more to do with his torn rotator cuff than Soto Carras offense. You know what I'm saying? But that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to really talk about that. I'm here to give my prediction between these two fighters right here. Now, Looking at this fight, I just see everything going in Sean Porter's favor. You know what I'm saying? Um, I could definitely see um, Andre Berto countering effectively on Sean Porter because Sean Porter doesn't have the best defense necessarily. And um, when you have Sean Porter's style, you're going to get hit by punches. You know, he got hit a lot against Kell Brook, um, got knocked down by Adrian Broner, and um, got hurt by Keith Thurman several times throughout the fight. So when you have that come forward, ruthless kind of aggression, in that ring, you going especially when you're facing a power puncher, you're gonna get hit with some shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I agree with Andre Berto to an extent that for a young dude, Sean Porter does have a lot of miles on him. You know, but I never. I, but then again, I can't really say he has a lot of miles because although he did get hit with some shit, he wasn't beat. Like he he wasn't punished in any of his fights. He might have took an accum if you look at his re if you look over the course of his fights, he may have taken an accumulation of punches throughout those fights, but at like in one solitary fight, he hasn't necessarily ever been punished. You know what I'm saying? Uh got cut against Kell Brook, but these things happen in the sport of boxing. And like I said, with Sean Porter's style, these things are gonna happen, you know? Um but uh, I could definitely see Andre Berto countering effectively. I could see him landing the left hook, the uppercut. But um, and just by looking at the the knockout ratio and looking at um how the fighters react when getting hit between Keith Thurman and Andre Berto, I think it's safe to say that Keith Thurman may be the harder puncher. And just based off of the fact that um he. Sean Porter was able to take Keith Thurman's punches. I don't see why he wouldn't be able to take Andre Berto's. You know what I'm saying? But um, just looking at this fight, man, um, I could definitely see Sean Porter taking over. I could see Andre Berto doing well in the the beginning three rounds, you know, because that's when Sean Porter likes to fill out his opponents in the beginning. Then afterwards, he just does his thing. Um, he seems to be in great shape. I see what he's doing. Um, his dad was saying how how great his conditioning is and i'm gonna take his word for it because um he was in great condition against keith thurman because he was getting hit with them fucking punches and recovering quickly so um that has to be conditioning you know what i'm saying mixed with a good chin or whatever but um 
Sean Porter is definitely coming forward. He's going to try to get a knockout because he hasn't had a knockout in a long time. He wasn't able to uh, knock out Broner. He was not able to knock out Keith Thurman. He lost. Keith, uh, Kel Brook, no. You know what I'm saying? He just what hasn't even been able to knock out any of the top guys. So him being able to knock out Andre Berto, who's only been stopped once, will be a statement. And um, I think that's legit enough to call out Keith Thurman and consider a rematch. You know what I'm saying? Keith Thurman has to fight that guy. Uh, what's that fucking guy's name? He beat Shane Mosley. Um, I forgot his fucking name, but he he he's nobody crazy. But uh, Keith Thurman has to fulfill a mandatory. You know what I'm saying? But uh. Besides all of that, man, uh, Sean Porter is going to be the aggressor in this fight, no doubt. Uh, Berto has a wide stance, you know, similar to like a, uh, from the, from kind of like Andre Berto. I, I want to say Andre Berto, I mean, uh, Adrian Broner, I'm sorry, the other AB, I'm sorry. He has a, he has a wide stance like an Adrian Broner, you know, like Paulie Malignaggi. So with them having that wide stance, they're not going to be able to move, um, quickly you know what i'm saying it's gonna be hard for them to get out of the way of the punches and that's just not andre Berto's style he's not he's not like a like a fast footwork kind of guy he's not the type to get out of the way you know um so he's just gonna be there you know he's gonna be there to get hit and i think he'll he will get punished by uh sean porter and i see sean porter not knocking out Berto. You know, because Berto is a tough guy, but I could definitely see Berto getting knocked down, and I could definitely see him losing. Uh, um, I want to say a nine to three fight, nine rounds to three in favor of Sean Porter, or an eight to four in Sean Porter's favor. I, I just don't see how um, Andre Berto will win this fight. It seems as if um, Andre Berto didn't want this fight in the first place, but that's a whole nother topic you know i'm not saying he ducking anybody but um i think this is a fight that andre berto will not get anything beneficial from this except the experience you know but um that's just personally what i think about it i got sean porter winning against andre berto uh by decision but if it comes by knockout shit that's even a bigger statement for sean porter but let me know who y'all guys think is going to win this fight. Let me know how they're going to win. And just let me know what y'all guys think about this fight overall, man. This is Mizuma TV. Subscribe to your boy. I'm out.